Hey everyone, I'm the Penny Pinching Prepper and welcome to my channel. For those of you who've been subscribed for a while, do me a favor, get down there below, hit that thumbs up uh, button, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you're new to this channel, check it out. Maybe you might learn something, maybe you might like my channel. Uh, today's topic uh, is going to be ferro rod tips and techniques. I'm going to take you through showing you how to use a ferro rod um, in easier ways uh, than a lot of people show and um, a bunch of different techniques. So bear with me. We're going to go through several different fires and uh, uh, I've got my, my thumb all messed up still. So bear with me, but... Let's go through and do this together now. Um, let me get a little bit of extra protection down. Some heavy duty foil double it over. Give me a nice little platform to work on. Now the first one I'm going to work with is sawdust. Um, sawdust can be easy and hard all at the same time. Uh, you really need to take your time with sawdust. Try not to rush through it. <laughs> but it works great when you uh you know what you're doing now put a decent amount down uh you can use half the amount of this but i'm just trying to show you a good example take your ferro rod all right and maybe have a stick or a knife on standby so first thing i'm going to show you is a helpful tip on, um, in technique when you're doing this get your thumb up on the striker a little bit all right a little bit a lot whatever you're comfortable with it allows you to get better uh, pressure and uh, smooth follow through uh, now i hardly use a, a, a shower spark technique what I like to do is I like to come down here at the bottom and go really slow and just dig in and make little curls right off of my magnesium bar, or not magnesium bar, my ferro rod. And I, it might be hard to see, but you'll see that I'm getting these little teeny tiny curls. Now the reason I like to do that is this will sit right on top of your tender, okay? And your spark will hit that and create more sparks and more heat and make things a lot faster when you're doing it. Now the other technique I like to use is when you do it try not to push it off all right and you'll see that I actually left some curls right on the end of the uh, the ferro rod all right and the reason being is when you go to do your first good spark it's going to hit those first, and it's going to create a, a hotter flying spark. All right, so. You know what? I think I got the wrong side. All right. I guess it's just been a long time since I, uh, I've used this one. 
forgot how far back you really got to angle it. So, you get down, you go ahead and you scrape a little bit of magnesium or ferro rod into it. All right, and then you should be able, within just the first couple of inches, So this is why I say keep your knife on standby is because once you get it, you kind of want to shoot. I just blew it out with my breath. All right, let's do this one more time. Once you get it going, kind of uh, move it around a little bit and create a, a line for it to travel down. I'm trying to hold my breath so I don't blow it out. I'm like right on it. So once that gets going, this is actually uh, fat wood from when I was sawing through the fat wood, I collected it. And so there's actual pitch inside of this. And you take a little bit of time and uh, it'll start wicking the other pitch up through it. And it'll burn for a long time. You keep playing with it, moving it over, flopping it to give it fresh burn, all right? And it'll go no problem. Now this is kind of hard to do when you're outside. And I know I'm inside right now. But if you make yourself a little bit of a windshield out of, you know, some branches or whatever. Just to keep the wind from blowing through or some tin foil you might have. <clears throat> that right there will do you great in a pinch. Um, it's usually a, a last resort that you would go to um, because it is a little bit more difficult due to the wind. All right, but at the end of the day, it works really great. Now, what a lot of us tend to go to is our fat wood. And I collect fat wood and I process fat wood. I like fat wood. It's kind of a hobby of mine. Um, and I grade it in, in certain certain different ways myself. I, I don't know if there's an actual grading to fat wood or anything. I just made it up myself. But I have my A+. Plus. All right. And that's like, it's it's got a really, really nice red uh, hue to it. And you can see it's wanting to make... Uh, like a, a white powder on the outside from the amount of uh, pitch that's inside of it. And then I have A, and then from A I go straight down to B. I, I don't have a B plus, I only have an A plus. And then I have, I guess what you would call C, or I call junk. Um, it's not technically junk. It's, uh, I use this more often than not for um, the transient stove. All of this does have pitch in it. Um, it's just not like soaked. It doesn't light up when you get a light behind it or anything like that. Um, but what makes this stuff so great, uh, inside of your transient stove, is it gets it hotter. Um, it, it probably gets you an extra 25 to, to 50 degrees hotter. So if you need to boil water in a quickness, throw some of this in there, bada boom, bada bang. So I carry it in these little strips and they can be hard to work with, especially when you're doing, um, uh, feathering sticks, stuff like that. So what I recommend if you're going to do a, a, a feather stick, 
and you want to do it with your knife is actually make it even smaller all right let's see if i can do this without killing myself all right let's see if i can get one more So it's almost like little matches, all right? And the reason I say this, or the reason I do this, not say this, the reason I do this is when you're working with small stuff, sometimes even smaller is easier than just small. Um, and that, it gives you three little pieces out of the same one to create your fire rolls with. Now, I do like to go small, even on these curls, which I'm not the best at. This is not the technique I would usually go to um, curls. I can do it, but it's not my favorite technique to go to. Curls can be a, a little hard if... You don't have a lot of practice and a lot of good technique. Now, if you notice how I'm holding my blade, it's actually at an, an angle. Um, that really helps a lot versus trying to go straight up and down. And, and the reason being is it almost gives you a slicing motion. So you're almost slicing through it instead of direct pushing through it. And um, it's the same technique or the, the same thing you would see if you uh, looked at um, a hand planer. For those of you who know what a hand planer is, you'll notice that the blade kind of has a, an angle to it. Or the opening of the hole or whatever. It, it, no, it's the blade. It kind of has an angle to it. And it allows you, if you know anything about hand planers everything that comes out the other end is uh, little curls so collect your your little curls and, and keep them with you um, they can be added but when you get done you should have a little curl stick I mean it, it's teeny tiny and then, like I said it takes a second now I'm gonna pause you guys real quick and I'm I'm gonna do these other two as well all right all right guys so when you get done you should have two or three depending on how you know you split it down or how many you felt you really need little feather sticks and you know they're not big at all and there's a few little pieces that knocked off I gathered them up <clears throat> now if you take these and you kind of stack them in a manner where it doesn't only stack them, but it spreads them out a little bit. You'll see you get a... Oh, really hard to see, I know. But you get a nice big... Uh, Nest-looking amount. Like a, you had ended up being able to do one nice good big feather stick so once again we'll go back to that technique we'll find the best spot we can to do it in and I'm, I'm gonna choose this spot get a little bit of that scraping down into it so it has a little bit of the ferro rod scraped into it now the reason I'm going to stress this even more on this one is I didn't go with my good fat wood this is this is uh, the, the the cheap stuff I would throw away into the uh, transient stove like I said but you see that one little or spark And up she goes. 
um, most of the time it's just about time consuming, you know, how, how time consuming is it? You know, so. So another technique now, Anybody who's ever done this before, I just was letting it, I was actually rolling and smothering it out because I, I want to go on to the next technique. But once you do that, lift it up a little bit, give it some air, and it'll really go up in flames for you. <clears throat> so for those of you who have problems with handling a knife, doing the, the whole feather stick thing, there's a... a an easier way to do it. You don't end up with these big, beautiful curls, but I'll, I'll show you what you end up with. Let me reach back down into my cheek bag here. I, I don't like wasting my good stuff, and we'll find a good piece to work with. And uh, we'll split it up again, hopefully, without killing myself. So once again, I split it into three. So if you got a good striker, one that's nice and thick, strong, or you have um, a knife that has a 40, uh, 45 degree angle on it, or 90 degree angle, excuse me, 90 degree angle on it, you can actually use your striker to make some pretty quick, decent little feather strips. Now, they don't come out looking exactly the same. They're, it's a little bit tighter. And uh, the straighter the wood you use, the, the easier it is. But you just find where it's wanting to bite in. And you go up and down. And try not to push through too hard. You'll end up with... A very interesting looking little fire stick. Alright. Um, you see that? And that's from using my striker. And it's really easy because it's easier to not push through. It's easier to not accidentally roll your knife the wrong way and then cut the feather strips off that you're trying to make you can just get going at it before you know it I know it's small but you have a little feather uh, little feather stick there and this comes back to having three of them. If you give me one second, I'm going to do my other three and come back to you. All right. So these, these ones here, like I said, you're, you're not going to get them perfect. But there's so much air and fuzz inside of these little teeny tiny curls that you get three of these together. And let's see what we can get out of it, huh? And there you go. I remember what I said last time. You want to keep these going. Lift them up. Give them a little bit of fire or a little bit of air to breathe. And these things will catch and you will be good to go. Just lift it up, a little bit of air. And there you go. The start of a fire. Um, if you have any questions or anything I missed or anything you guys want to add or you want to 
contact me for any reason, you can reach me at pennypinchingprepper77 at gmail.com. Uh, if you liked this video, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and you liked it, consider subscribing. Um, I'll be bringing more content like this and all kinds of other things to help you save money and, and uh, prep and everything else that's good in this community. Uh, do me a favor and uh, smash that like button for those of you who've been around for a minute and you didn't get around to it yet. And uh, with uh, nothing more to say, remember, God's good and God bless.